All right, so in the last video, you saw how we built the pick and part parts assembly machine, which we have running up here off a of finite state machine, right? So if you look at the ladder logic, it is a finite state machine. Now, the question was prompted, how would you do a process recovery? And could you do a process recovery with a different uh, PLC language other than ladder logic, right? So could you do, in this case, I'm using sequential function chart. Um, now I will show you this process running. I have three different uh, options or three different, uh, I guess, places that it could actually end up with a different result. So if the machine was upset in three different spots, it would actually recover in a different mode. Now I'm gonna show you this process working. So first, let's open this up and see the machine running. You can see it's making the part as you come in here. Now what I'm talking about is if the door was open, you had a machine cycle, or you had like a power cycle or something like that, or somebody powered the machine down, how would it recover? Or if the door was open like an operator came in. So it, like in this case, if I just open the door, just like this, the machine stops, it's in a good safe state, right? So let's, just, let's uh, look at our ladder logic. Um, our ladder logic right here shows the door is open, the state machine is in zero, so we're in a state, a, a safe state, right? So the machine is perfectly isolated. Now, we're not doing anything with our recovery mode right yet, even though it is active. So what we've done is we come over here and we activated our recovery mode. Now our recovery mode is triggering a bit, and this is a, just a binary bit that goes active. Now in, as soon as the bit goes active, it triggers a JSR, which then starts scanning, allows the PLC processor to start scanning the, repro the recovery process right here which is going to be our sequential function chart. So otherwise, if the machine is in normal mode, it won't actually uh, scan this routine, right? So this recovery process routine right here, it's not gonna scan it until that one bit, which is called process mode, or, or it's called recovery mode, is actually active. It is in the active state right now, but it's not doing anything because it's currently in the, the waiting status. So it's waiting on state one currently, so right now, each one of these says state one. So right now, even though there's suction, like the cylinder suction is on for, for one of these, or even both of these right now in this option. So in this option right here, the cylinder two and cylinder one both have uh, suction on them. So they both have the part there present. That's how we're determining the part. And then it's, and we're waiting currently on state one. So let me show you how that process works. So we're gonna, we're gonna shut the door. Okay, and then we're gonna come down here to ground view we we'll come over here and let's get to where we can hit the start button. And what we're gonna do is hit the start button and you're gonna see the way the process recovers. Okay, so it currently comes over here. It puts both cylinders back in the current pick spot. It allows the next product to come in. It then goes ahead and then now the recovery process is over. So it's gonna go ahead and go back to the state machine and assemble the part. Once the part is assembled, it will resume the process as it normally would. So that's a good you know, illustration of how a process upset or how a process recovery of a machine would actually be occurred or have actually one way you could do it. Now again, you could do it many, many different ways, but let me describe exactly how this process works. So while this is sitting right here, and we're gonna open up our PLC ladder logic right here and understand that this process recovery routine right here is not going to be scanned. So this JSR is not going to be scanned until it's triggered, until that bit comes high, which is right here, and which means the state machine is equal to zero, which is in a safe state. When that comes, when that's triggered on, that's when the recovery uh, process will actually, you know, start scanning in the process. So right now, as we explain it, it's not actually scanning. It's not actually scanning at all. It's not going to function in the process. So when we come in here, we understand right here, we have three different branches. We have this fir first parallel branch that uh, you know, branches over and makes a decision. The decision makers are right here, this transition one, transition two, and transition three. So what we're doing is we're saying if the suction is on, uh, on the first cylinder, but the suction is not on on the second cylinder, and the system is in state one, which it has been started, so that means the, the system is, it has been, the start button has been pressed, everything is good, meaning the door shut, everything is active, and you have the ability to start it. Then it will allow it to pro go down this stream, right? Secondly, if you have a part on 
cylinder two, which the suction is on on cylinder two, but not on cylinder one, and the machine is in this, our current state of one, which it has been started, then go ahead and you know do this this row right here. Now the next the next thing right here is the actual the cylinder one or cylinder two and cylinder one both have the product on them. So that's the one we actually seen, right? We actually showed cylinder one and cylinder two both having the suction or the product on them. So and then the uh, again and the the state or the machine was in a started mode. Then we come up here and we basically force both cylinders up. So we do do cylinder one up, cylinder two, cylinder one up. This right here, uh, we both can act. We we both can force both of these up if we needed to. But in this case, cylinder one was the one that was most active. So we basically say, okay, well, this is the cylinder that we want to push push up. Now, how am I transitioning? I'm saying, okay, I'm allowing the next transitions to happen based upon the current step. So what's the status of the step? Is it done? Well, how am I determining is it done? So I'm gonna right click or I'm gonna pop open the box for the configuration. I have preset timers in here. So I'm allowing this step to be active and it will be active for 70, or 750 milliseconds. So basically three quarters of a second. Now in three quarters of a second, you might be thinking, why did you choose that time? I chose that time to allow the process to function using the OPC server and making sure my bits are triggered and making sure things are happening the correct order. So once this is done, this time is done, as you see it overshot a little bit, then this active bit, this step uh, underscore 003 dash done, or dot done, DN, that will become true. Then it will step down here to step six. In step six, we basically turn the cylinder, make it go up, we turn it off, so what we did up here, we, we turned it on. We're turning that bit off up here. We're moving the gantry one and gantry two into, into their current positions. So we're telling them to, to go home, go to their positions, their pick positions that we want them to go to. And again, to allow that to have time, I said 750 milliseconds. So I could have changed that time. I could have had it more or less, but then I'm using the step done bit. So I'm not actually looking for the positions to actually have obtained their positions I'm just saying okay stay in this step right here and make sure these functions happen but only do that for 750 milliseconds and then step through to the next thing now the the very last step right here which is before it branches off and it goes into the active recovery or the recovery mode and turns it off the very last step of the action um, each step has an action right again 750 milliseconds that's just a base time i just put in all of these just so you know i mean you could again really is dependent upon how long do you need to hold your bit you know active right um cylinder one present and cylinder two present what i did right here is these are brand new so what i did is i basically i'll show you where i use these uh we'll copy that bit all right actually let's let's uh let's go to uh cross reference and you can see where I use those. So I use these currently right here. In state four, I'm blocking the ability to actually tell the cylinder to go down and pick apart, right? So I'm telling it to, to block that ability. Then I'm using it down here to bypass and say the part did pick. So in state, in state six, I'm basically saying in my regular machine operations, if it's in recovery mode, I want to interpret that and allow that to actually, you know, have a, a a good understanding so I'm meshing the recovery process with the actual um, normal state machine or the normal function of the machine right so just think about that now let's go back over here and let's see again when you come over here you'll see that this is just these two are the basically the same so let's come over here and look at this one and we'll go ahead and cross-reference that one now we'll look at that again same spot that's all I'm doing. So now when do I, now let's actually talk about this. So I do this and again, 750 milliseconds, okay? And as soon as that 750 milliseconds is done, then the, the step uh, underscore 009 dot done will actually transition and allow it to go to step 15. Now step 15 is currently, you can see it's active, but it's not running, right? It's not running right now because the 
process is not scanning. Again, we talked about the JSR and the process and how we're allowing this to, to this process or this routine to scan when we want it to, but not scan when we don't want it to. So it's not currently scanning, even though it shows active right here, there's no free running timer or there's no time accumulated in this. But it did cut off the recovery. So in the action I have right here, it turned off the recovery mode. So this is the actual bit, and I'll show you this. This is the actual bit right here that we're using to actually control the actual JSR. So I'm turning it on right here in state zero, and then I'm going to, again, utilize that and allow my process to recover. And as soon as my process has recovered, I'm going to exit by turning that bit off. Now again, I can show you that one more time. Let's come over here and you can see, let's just wait till it gets into the, to the exact same spot, which is the most, I guess, the hardest spot to recover from, which will open a door right here. You can see that is active right now, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrink this down and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna let you see this process. All right, so we're gonna come in and we're gonna shut the door and we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna get into a, a, basically a starting step. Okay, so now, right now, it's waiting on the start button. So it's waiting on the start button and let me see if I can let you see the one that it's actually it's going to transition to the to this one right here being that we have two parts in there it's going to transition to this one you'll see it's currently waiting on the machine to start so we're going to hit the start button okay let's press the start button you see it transition through and you see just that quick and that easy it you know transitioned and actually cycled through it wasn't a very long process whatsoever now I could have did more functions with that, but again, to get the machine back into a working order, that's what I'm doing to recover it. All right, and again, I have three different options in that sequential function chart of how to do that. Now again, I just wanted to show you again, a, a good way to recover from that because in the last video we showed, you know, where we upset it and we, we showed a safety mechanism, but we didn't show how to recover from that. And again, I wanted to come back on a next, another video to keep the video short and sweet to the point to show a recovery from that. But also in the meantime, there was a question asked, well, could you use a different programming language? And of course, you can use any different programming language as you want, but it needs to make sense and it needs to function and have the reliability behind it. The process that you're trying to do when you're, pro when you're programming your PLCs is to make the machine reliable, is to make it work as it's as scope of work says it's supposed to do right and then you're supposed to make it easy afterwards you're supposed to make it easy to read easy for somebody to come behind you like a technician or an engineer or somebody that has to troubleshoot the machine the plc code make it easy for them to read so you have three goals really to make the machine work the scope of work make it safe make it reliable really uh, and then make sure you, you can make it uh, easy to read easy to uh, understand right so when you come down to it we can easily see that this process is fairly simple right this sequential function chart is fairly simple it's not complex at all it's only used for process recovery and then as far as the rest of the machine it works off of the finite state machine that we built prior to this so again if you haven't seen that video go back and watch that video but Again, when it comes down to it, I wanted to show a process of recovery in a different language uh, other than ladder logic. I could have used ladder logic to recover from this um, very simply, uh, but let's just show a little bit of, you know, like diversity in the way things are, are working and things that you would actually see in people that, you know, maybe a programmer chose to use the sequential function chart to recover from that, right? So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully you, you got to open your eyes and see a different perspective. And again, we'll see you guys on the next one.